your camera. Oh, I beg your pardon. a little hot <laughs> that was the <laughs> joe holland quartet recorded recording a song called i think you're wonderful um and it was recorded by paul w klipsch ah. wow. in the 50s yeah i think the input gain was a little saturated there sorry Ooh, that's a technical <laughs> term technical term so hello everybody uh mark castman here matt summers here uh the klipsch guys uh with another ed edition of the listening lounge uh, we're, we're really excited today. We have our friends with Ankyo here with us, uh, Rob and Rolf. And uh, before we get into that, we just want to uh, uh, toast with everybody here. Hopefully you have a, a cold a cold one of some sort. So uh, we're, we're celebrating this, our 75th anniversary, but uh, we're going to have lots of listening lounges to uh, enjoy with everybody. And uh, uh, share what your beverage is, uh, gents, if you would. Rolf, you go first. I've got some dihydrogen monoxide, which is very dangerous. Don't drink dihydrogen monoxide. <laughs> Great. So I have a uh, half brow half a Weissen and a big giant pole in her mug. Somebody said, go big or go home. So that's beautiful. That's an impressive Cheers. mug. That's a very impressive mug. And I have like, red wine in a metal cup. <laughs> Consistency. <laughs> okay. I love it. Uh, I have this little hedgehog. Uh, this is a. Belgian wheat from Metazoa Brewing here in Indianapolis. So my my 11 year old is crazy about hedgehogs. So I brought this home to her delight. She's like, "What is that? Oh, that's beer." She's like, "Oh, okay, Dad." No, anyway, <laughs> cheers everybody. Cheers, cheers. Cheers. And cheers to everybody watching. So if this is the first time you've uh, attended a listening lounge with us, uh, just to, to let you know, this is meant to be very lighthearted, very fun, a little bit of a jump on the weekend, summertime, and. Uh, we have lots of uh, cool, cool product coming your way. And um, actually, these guys are here to share with us uh, on that very topic with Ankyo. But um, I, I want to introduce them first. Uh, and of course, you know, Matt Summers. Matt, we, we there's also something special happening for this uh, listening lounge. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, what we're going to give away? Sure. Yeah, I can talk a little bit about the, the giveaway. It's actually a really nice pairing um, of, uh, of Klipsch and Onkyo products. Um, let's see if Brittany can share my screen for me. And special thanks to Brittany for, for uh, doing that in the background um, yeah, and making sure the show runs smooth. Brittany Kelly. Um, Ooh, look at this. So, yeah, so this is hey, the Klipsch RP. Is really that big? You know what? Um, oh. I, to composite, so who knows? That would be awesome. <laughs> They're actually, yeah, they're about that big, you know. They're, yeah, they're pretty big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is a Klipsch RP600M, the award-winning Klipsch RP600M, um, and nice. the Onkyo TXNR5100, which we're going to talk a lot about today and get yeah. into. Uh, but this is an incredible pairing and a great, um, you know, sort of a, a really nice uh, two-channel critical listening system, if you will. Oh, absolutely. And I got to tell you that uh, the sound quality, uh, 
that Ankyo amplifiers are known for. Lots of history with Ankyo. Love it. The musical products and uh, very attainable, you know, right in line with uh, Paul Klipsch. He, he wanted to make great audio attainable. Um, so we're very excited. What a dynamic pairing this is. And uh, we and speaking of a dynamic pairing, <laughs> let's let's get to our guests, Rob and Ralph. Would you guys give us a little bit of an insight to your your title, your position, a little bit of your history in the industry, what you do, and then you're off to the races with the presentation today. Let's. Can we start with Rob? I've got his his uh his image. Sure thing. Up. So uh, yeah. uh, senior senior product manager. Um, I read a book uh, at Radio Shack when I was a kid because I like to take my toys apart. So I wanted to learn how the electronics worked and. It was a book on building speakers. I didn't build speakers, but in that book, it explained an equilateral triangle listening position. And once I heard a pair of stereo speakers imaging, I just had to be around it for the rest of my life. And um, I'm very fortunate to continue to be working in this industry. I'm also, uh, as the embarrassing pictures show, I, um, I, uh, I guess I took audio as far as I could and, and went touring with a band. And that's Actually, in Kuwait, we went and played for the troops in Kuwait a couple of years ago. Cool. Um, yeah. So, uh, and it's, you know, it's a Barry Manilow tribute band, right? <laughs> right, right. And He's that's a band too. Um, but uh, no, but uh, you know, over the course of, of the years, uh, not just being an audiophile and a musician, but uh, very heavily involved in bringing that experience, you know, to people everywhere. So I got involved in the installation side of things and programming. And, you know, and you name it, Control 4, Crestron. And so, you know, uh, when I had an opportunity to bring that to a global perspective on these products, I, I couldn't say no. So I'm, I'm very fortunate to be here. And we really appreciate you guys having us here today. Thank you. Oh, sure. Great. That's excellent. I do have a couple of quick questions um, about, uh, about the band. Um, so were you lead guitarist and singer in the band? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's a Metallica tribute. They actually opened for Battery. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, their name is Battery. They opened for Metallica during the Garage Inc. tours. And um, they're, they're actually two hours north of you guys in, in, um, in uh, Lakes of Four Seasons, I think it is, Indiana. Oh, I'm actually going out there for uh, July 4th. So how fun. Oh, that's excellent. The other question that I have for you is um, I have heard other people call you, <clears throat> excuse me, the professor. Where does that come from? So, um, I, I uh, so Joe Petrillo, uh, our COO at uh, Ankyo USA at the time, um, wanted to bring in somebody with like street experience um, to look, well, to go inside of these products and actually know what's going on deep, deep down inside of them. So I guess I kind of brought that to our engineers in Japan, and and you're going to see a lot of that in, in this year's lineup and. He just started calling me the professor. I don't know. I guess <laughs> that has That's nothing to fantastic. do with uh, uh, Gilligan's <laughs> Island. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even go there. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Well, sweet. Well, let's hand it over to Rolf. Uh, get a little bit of background on uh, kind of what you've been doing up to for the past uh, thirty years or so. Well, I, I just like to put it out there right off the bat. You know, if Rob is the professor, I am not Marianne. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put a stop to that rumor right there. Uh, I know I, I kind of, you know, look like Marianne. I'm, I'm cute and I'm petite, but uh, no, yeah, not Marianne. Not, not cute. Uh, <laughs> um, wow, look at all those pictures. Who is that? That looks like that Marianne. Looks like me, actually. Uh, yeah, so I got my start uh, quite a few years ago. I won't say exactly how long ago, but let me just say LaserDisc was still around when I got started. Uh, so yeah, I started my uh, oh, career dang. in the industry with uh, Pioneer, and was yeah. in product planning and marketing with those guys for uh, quite a while, almost twenty years before transitioning over to Ankyo. Still uh, have my laser disc. Yeah, yeah, you know, I I still do too. I am not ashamed to say, love them, uh, big shiny silver discs. <laughs> Leave them out in the sun long enough, they're like big silver potato chips. It's awesome. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so like Rob, you know, really really obsessed with audio and video. Uh, I think my obsession started actually when I f saw the first Criterion LaserDisc, which happened to be Blade Runner. And uh, that was my first exposure to LaserDisc, really. And I was just so entranced by the, the technology that was involved in that. I, I wanted to know more. And I got into retail, did that for a number of years, and eventually uh, 
got on board at Pioneer and, um, you know, in my retail days too, not to jump back, I, you know, Ankyo was one of the biggest brands that I sold and you just couldn't go wrong with that. It was a great pairing with just about anything out there. And Clips, of course, too, was another brand that we sold quite extensively at the retail outlets I worked at. Uh, so yeah, getting back into the present day, it's, it's a fantastic pairing. It just makes sense to me that that's, that's the direction that we would go. Early um, days of home theater, right, Ralph? Yeah, very, very early. In fact, my, I think my first memory of, of doing any kind of uh, quote unquote custom installation uh, was working with a crew of guys uh, that were professional custom installers. I was not, I was just a, a sales guy, but uh, we did a, an IDTV installation at a shopping mall. And that was in improved definition television, the precursor to high def. And we had some NEC branded uh, rear projection IDTVs with the line doublers and the line quadruplers hooked up in the external boxes. And we did a, uh, a show with, uh, for the um, photographer of the Beatles, who, whose name escapes my mind. And we had all his photos shown around on these big rear screen projection televisions. That was a pretty cool event. Hmm. Fantastic. Awesome. So, so you guys, it's in your blood is the bottom line and you're in good company. I mean, uh, you have to be passionate in this industry and, uh, with the speed of technology, uh, we experience it all the time. Uh, <laughs> technology waits for nobody. And, we, we decided, um, you know, when this pandemic hit, we were like, gosh, you know, this technology is ready for us to reach out to the consumers and share directly from the manufacturer, from the teams, uh, really directly responsible for the products. What is fantastic about these products? So that's why you guys are here. And that's what we're going to do today. And uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, lots of fun. So let's let's get off on the uh, let's let's go ahead and get on to the uh, our, our, our our outline our program. Yeah. We want to make sure wanna, we cover these things. I want to clarify one thing though. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to give away that impressive new technology and those killer clip speakers in uh, the chat um, based on the best question. So that's 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 how it's uh, it's going to be awarded. I wanted to clarify that before we move forward. So I think we have a uh, little video we could run in the background and maybe Rolf will, Rolf is the master presenter, <laughs> as we all know. So <laughs> Rolf, you, you could uh, go ahead and, and talk over the video. I mean, that might not be a bad way to, to, to kick this off. Is this a home video? What is this? Oh yeah. <laughs> you, you recognize yeah, so, this one. You know, Ankyo is one of those few surviving Japanese electronics companies that got its start in audio. Uh, unlike so many other companies out there that are still around, you know, they got their start doing something else. I won't name names, but I'm sure you can figure out who I'm talking about. Uh, but Ankyo, yeah, got to start in audio. Uh, one of the very first things that they did was develop a totally radical new way of doing pressed paper cone mass production in speaker drivers. And that's still used by a number of uh, manufacturers out there today. Uh, really some fantastic bang for the buck product or bang for the yen in this case. Uh, one of the things that, that I know that Klipsch is, is famous for is bringing ex exceptional value, not just in, in performance, but in build quality as well, too, at a very affordable prices. That's kind of where Ankyo uh, really made their, their uh, headway in the industry many, many years ago. Uh, and of course, one of the big names that's come out of the Ankyo as well, too, is uh, the Integra line, which everybody knows and loves on the custom side. And a lot of those high-end Integra features trickle into the Ankyo line, which you'll see as we go forward into this year's new 2021 product cycle. But as you can see here in this uh, little homage to the past glory of Ankyo, uh, we've gotten some uh, really uh, very, very famous products uh, for sound quality reproduction, accuracy and reproduction of sound staging, things like that. And, you know, it's not just been about the affordable, it's about the almost the unattainable, really, I mean. Ankyo engineers don't you know, just do mid-priced tier product. They also experiment quite heavily in stratospherically priced products as well too. So again, a lot of that technology and build quality does find its way eventually into the Ankyo brand as well too. So you're not gonna be spending tens of thousands of dollars. You can if you want to, and we'll be happy to sell it to you, sure. But yeah, I mean, the idea is to make fantastic sound quality affordable for everybody. So, so tens of thousands of dollars. What about those flip shorns? 
<laughs> I, I, I want them. <laughs> but you know, to, to back Rolf up with that, I mean, I've been to Japan and sat in uh, rooms with engineers. And um, I, I'll tell you this, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a different culture. Uh, the US really drives the AVR market, you know, with the feature sets. Um, so it's a, it's a little bit different culture, but I have to say that um, after 30 people in a room looking at me like I was absolutely crazy, before you know it, the, these features started showing up that were that were for the US that were perfect for the US market. So everybody in that chat, everybody watching this video, we listened to all of your comments, all of your complaints, <laughs> and we we want to continue to listen and continue to develop to develop these products for your needs. Yeah, we can't make great product without your feedback. I mean, that's absolutely essential to us. Otherwise, it's just a vanity project, and that's not what it's about. That's not why we're here. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love the idea that, that it is the 75th. Right I love the idea that it's the 75th of Onkyo, like it is the 75th Eclipse. So, you know, there's a, there's a nice parallel there. And you talk about the dawn of audio when all of this started and people got so excited about, um, you know, uh, a better sounding world. Um, I love the idea of that sort of re the resurgence of that happening now because people are just also, you know, just in the last decade getting back into, you know, high end two channel audio again. And, you know, even the, the with the vinyl revolution and all of that, it's 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 just incredible to see that there are companies out there that are making affordable hi fi. I love it. And what has happened this year? I, I mean, people have been at home realizing, hey, uh, let's make life better here at home, uh, cooking at home having home entertainment becoming more important and also the relaxation and bonding time that happens yeah. with that. Yeah. You know, this is, you know, back in the day when these companies began in the era of hi-fi, a hi-fi system was as important as another appliance. I mean, name, name another appliance you can't live without. I mean, a hi-fi system was part of the deal. And you know, today the portable devices, you know, the, the fast paced lifestyle people, can't seem to slow down. But I think this year has been a lesson for all of us, me included, uh, to slow down and enjoy, savor a little bit of the simple things in life. And one of those honestly is great sound and movies, great music, movies, hanging out at home, chilling out. And and um, it's it's a great investment. It's it's a great investment. It's something that you know will last you for many, many years and continue to pay dividends and you guys you're offering you know we <laughs> the speaker guys the audio guys audio. but but the building blocks of a system start with you guys for example you know what what you guys are doing and the technology integration the cutting edge of technology so i know you guys have a lot to cover um, we may have to do another one of these with you guys just because we may not get through it all today and depending on the questions um we just want to make sure we get all the information of, uh, to, to our, our, our fans and our, our listeners, our, our viewers, uh, because uh, I, I eat this up while we're doing it, by the way. I'm, I'm one of our viewers. I, I'm, I'm just eating it up from you guys. So without further ado, I'll, I'll, I'll try to not talk so much and let you guys do it. <laughs> Yeah, I would love to get from, uh, I'm going to hand it off to Rolf a little bit and talk about some amplifier design stuff. Let's get into the heavy stuff, if we can. Let's talk a little bit about about the uh, Onkyo amplifier designs and, and sort of what is the philosophy behind that? Well, it, as I'm sure a lot of the viewers uh, on this event are aware, there's there's so many different speaker designs out there in the marketplace there's so many different choices out there uh, all sorts of different resistance loads all sorts of different efficiency ratings uh you know of course Klipsch is one of the, the easiest speakers in the industry to drive they're almost like 100 percent efficient now uh which is pretty crazy give them no power at all and you'll get sound just about uh, <laughs> oh man that, it, it, that's it, fun. It, it's crazy <laughs> i mean I do, I do competitive analysis all the time of speakers as well as of uh, AV receivers and you now I'm constantly like oh my god how much more efficiencies can they squeeze out of these clip speakers they're embarrassing everybody else um, but that being said you know the one of the things that Onkyo's amplifier engineers have always been famous for is not skimping when it comes to power on reserve so even on our entry-level receivers like the new TX NR5100 plug uh, that model has you know a uh, 20 amp power supply on board so 
even though it's an entry level receiver that you would not traditionally think of like, you know, hooking up to some, uh, you know, really exotic, super expensive flagship speakers, it could still drive those, you know, super expensive flagship speakers at a, at a very reasonable uh, level with that beefy uh, power supply. As we go up the price ladder, of course, too, we go into the 40, 45, even some 60 amp uh, power supplies on the flagship models over the years. So plenty of power on reserves. When you need that dynamic, you know, punch in the gut from your speakers and a good uh, action sequence and surround sound movie or, or the music that you really want to crank up to 11, uh, that's something that that power supply is not going to crap out on you. It's going to provide all the power that you need for those sudden bursts of energy on demand. Um, and one of the other things that, that's part of that design philosophy too is making sure that the amplification stays safe. So one of the technologies that Ankyo developed and patented some years back uh, in the early days of the DVD, as a matter of fact, was something called VLSC, uh, which I think stands for- v Vector Linear Shaping Circuit. Yeah, yeah, Vector Linear, on, yeah, thank you very much. You know, I'm a little tongue tied today. Being on Facebook Live with Klebsch is very intimidating. Um, so what the idea behind that was is to look at all incoming digital audio signals, and before they get converted into analog waveforms to go out to the amplification stage and then to your speakers, VLSC is designed to look for any problematic bursts of uh, noise in these digital signals to protect the amplifier from unnecessarily clipping. And there were some interesting examples of that way back in the early days of DVD where some movies that got released in the menu system, not the actual movie, but in the menu, you know, you put the DVD in and it starts to play the menu on your TV screen. Uh, a couple of movies had bursts of white noise that we couldn't hear, but the DAC and the receiver could hear. And first generation models from all the brands out there would suffer the same problem as the DACs inside would think that that was sound that was supposed to get shunted out to the amplifiers and the receiver would suddenly shut off because it was protecting us. Uh, so that was something that VLSC was developed uh, for. And it also looks for other problems in digital audio uh, uh, information as well, too. So it's it's a really cool technology. So uh, Onkyo engineers are, are very interested in all sorts of different aspects of the audio going in, not just going out, how it's reproduced. It's what's coming in as well. Oh, yeah, there are, these are dynamic audio amplification chips that on our on our uh, main board. Um, that's something that we've we've been doing for quite a while too. So VLSC lives inside there. I'm seeing comments on the right. Can I just like jump in once in a while and? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, man. yeah, do it. Because like when somebody mentions Dirac, you know, I can't keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, uh, l let's talk about the 5100 uh, for a second more. I mean, uh, four uh, HDMI 2.1 inputs. Bug um, free HDMI 2.1 input. That is correct. Um, as somebody asked about a Bluetooth transmitter. Yes, we do have an advanced Bluetooth transmitter, Aptex HD. Uh, so you will be able to uh, enjoy your head, uh, your Bluetooth headset. And before anybody uh, asks, yes, you can use the Bluetooth wireless headphones, and people can be listening to all the speakers playing back at the same time. Look at this right, thing. So, Rolf, wow. When you, when you lower the main zone volume, you still have your Bluetooth where you want it, right? Yeah, exactly. Everybody's got independent volume control, so there's no more fighting over the remote control to raise or lower the volume to comfortable levels. And, and, and that's great, too, for the people that live in the household that may, might be harder of hearing. Um, and, and I want to point this out, too. If there are any sales guys watching this video right now, don't be afraid to talk about Bluetooth headphones to your customers because it may seem like something that you know may not necessarily be related to that sale, but people are sensitive about their hearing. And if they themselves or they have a family member that's hard of hearing, wireless transmission to Bluetooth headphones is a lifesaver because then that person has their own independent volume control. Everybody else is listening to their favorite TV shows and movies at a more reasonable level. So it's, it's a win-win for everybody. That's a cool feature. That's cool. Yeah, look For at sure. this thing. Oh, I'm done. Yeah, look at the look at this thing though. I I, I love the overall look of of the uh, the AVR um, and and the idea that this is uh, we're getting ready to launch this, and you know the world will soon be uh, see this thing unleashed. Um, can we talk a little bit more about the NR fifty one hundred? Well, of course, we could talk all day about the NR fifty one hundred. 
Um, you know, let me just jump right into something here because, you know, we, we kind of alluded to this earlier, the partnership between uh, Onkyo and Klipsch. Uh, our engineers and Klipsch engineers have actually collaborated on something that's really awesome called Klipsch Optimized Mode. And that starts in the 5100. It's not just a flagship technology. And uh, as we probably know, a lot of receivers, preamps, what have you out there, they come with automatic acoustic room calibration where there's an included microphone in the box and it sends out all sorts of crazy test tones throughout your speakers. And it changes what the speaker does to accommodate for the unique acoustic properties of the room, the, sh the shape, the size, how far they away they are from the listening position, that kind of stuff. But one of the things they also do, these automatic room calibration processes, they also automatically set the crossovers of the speaker. And that can really influence the sound of the speaker itself. And I know a lot of speaker engineers out there and they don't like when somebody changes the quality of sound in their speakers. So like our AccuEQ, it's great for all these other brands of speakers adjusting the crossovers. It makes most speakers sound better. But where Klipsch is concerned, their engineers were like, well, wait a minute. I think we can improve upon this. You know, it's a I great think, idea. I think you've seen some of the other more. listening lounges, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Busted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. So, so if, if you um, uh, jump to one of the next slides in there, yeah. So they gave the Onkyo engineers access to all of the preferred crossover settings for their reference series of speakers. So when you go to the next image in this uh, little combination of slides, or maybe it was the one just before that, uh, it's very easy to do. You go into the speaker configuration option, the receiver and you choose the combo option. And in there, you would select which clips reference speakers you're using in any particular channel. And that will get you the optimal performance out of the speaker. So exactly the right frequency range is going to exactly the right drivers in your clips reference speaker, uh, as opposed to it being done, I don't wanna say willy nilly, but almost randomly by the onboard traditional way of doing things automatically. So this is a much more precise way of, of getting the best possible performance out of those reference clip speakers. So this, hey, comes, uh, this comes right out of the box on the on the 5100? This is actually going to be a firmware update. And Rob, correct me if I'm wrong, That's it, it'll be out, uh, I think, just in time for this receiver to when it sure. ships. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Fantastic. Speaking of clips, can I, can I just share a little video real quick? Yeah, please. Yeah, okay. do it. So, so this is my uh, humble yet confusing um, lair here. This, just a moment. Let me get my handle on OBS here. <laughs> so you can see uh, Klipsch Forte 3s right there, and then the Terminator hand, of course. And, um, you know, working from home uh, due to the pandemic, this room has just been, I mean, lab central, you know. So, uh, but I, I have to say, and I'm not shamelessly plugging or anything, but when I moved over to the Forte threes, I mean, I even, I got rid of my sub, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, it just, everything sounds great through it. And I mean that because I demo every single receiver practically of ours, but also on the market. And, uh, you know, it's just an exceptional pairing. Oh, by the way, that's my Metroid ceiling, my, uh, my RPG diffusers. Good. Yep, and uh, height channels uh, that haven't fallen on my head yet. It's your home lab. It's my home lab. So, I mean, oh, and uh, homemade base traps and uh, all that cool. good stuff. So, nice. you know, like, uh, you know, going back to it, I mean, I know we're supposed to be having fun right now, and uh, we could talk tech, and we will. But, uh, you know, the point is, you know, uh, speaking for Rolf and myself, and I know you guys are included, we're in this industry because we want to be, and we want to, you know, bring that excitement um to everybody out there that's using these products or who wants to experience, you know, great uh, movies and music from home. Uh, the 5100 is a, is a great way to get started with HDMI 2.1. So. Um, oh, I love the idea, Rob, that you're, uh, um, that you're using heritage speakers as, uh, as your front channels with the, with the Fortes. 
Um, I'm using that. I think we talked a little bit about that before. I'm using those as my left and right channels at home as well. Um, and I just love the imaging from it. It's fantastic. I mean, the imaging is just amazing. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to name brands, but I mean, I've been through them all over the last 25 years or whatever, um, or a lot of them. And that goes for amplifiers and that sort of thing too. And I, I have to tell you that uh, I just, I just love the way they sound and uh, especially, uh, I, I had a, a pre-production sample of our RZ50 that's coming out, you know, moving forward in the lineup, and uh, it just had so much guts, and it just sounded so awesome. I'm, I'm usually like an analog stickler, but I said to myself, wow, I mean, we've really reached the new pinnacle um, in, the, in the performance of these devices, and, you know, there's been some setbacks this year, uh, the AKM DAC factory burned down. So uh, we have um, new DACs in there, and, and the products were retuned for those DACs, and I think they did a fantastic job. They sound awesome with the clip speakers. Uh, but somebody, you know, a lot of people are asking about uh, Dirac, right? So we've invested in Dirac Live. This is really fun to talk about. I mean, uh, AccuEQ has been great for years, but, you know, it was time to step it up. And there's a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it's it's incredibly accurate uh, impulse response measurement. Um, now, one of my favorite parts is your your ability to either use the Onkyo app and the included wired microphone, or you could download the PC app for free and use a USB microphone starting at about 99 bucks and not have to be in the same room as the AVR and, and literally do all your room correction and your setup untethered from the AVR, which, uh, you know, for me, uh, be, being that I was an integration specialist for years, it's really amazing, you know, when you have a rack in the other room and you can and you can tune everything without being in front of the AVR. Um, uh, Rolf, what do you have to add? That, oh, actually, so... We have uh, three uh, Dirac slots available in our AVR. They're all available with uh, IR and IP commands too, in case anybody's wondering. And we are, uh, we do have a uh, full 20 to 20,000 hertz uh, package right out of the box with no need for an upgrade. So I know somebody asked about that on the chat. I wanted to cover that as well. So uh, this starts at the 7100, which is uh, 1099. So I mean, it's an incredible value, but on top of that, you're getting cutting edge room correction and the convenience. And uh, that's, for me, this is a, I don't know, am I, am I having enough fun with you guys? It's supposed to be fun, right? So for me, that's a fun conversation. <laughs> well, you're I mean, there's probably nothing more fun that I'd rather talk about besides uh, maybe going on tour again, playing guitar. Rob, Rob, Rob you're getting, Rob, a, lot you're getting a lot of great, great responses, responses in the comments. In the comments. Uh, yeah, and, 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 uh, I'm happy to see that. And there, there, there's just been an awful lot of, you know, it's been a tough couple of years with uh, the pandemic and the, and the factory fires and all that. And it's just so great to be on the edge here where we're about to see these products come to fruition and get into the hands of enthusiasts, you know, and uh, I don't want to hijack the entire conversation here, but oh, no, go right ahead. Go right ahead. <laughs> we're, we're super, super excited. Actually, um, I'm going to just, you guys go ahead for a second. I'm going to cue something up that I'd like to share. Yeah, please do. I've got a quick question for Rolf. I think it's a, kind of important from, you know, and I always, Mark, you know this, I always try to play devil's advocate a little bit from a newbie standpoint, you know. Um, but if, say I'm, uh, you know, um, a consumer that loves great sound and I've got a discerning ear and I can tell the difference, um, what have you guys done for, from uh, the amplification standpoint or the AVR standpoint to make that more accessible, to make, to make it easier to set up, to make it easier to, for me to integrate with it if I don't have any experience with this type of uh, technology, but I have a good ear? Well, there, there's a couple of things uh, that you can do. Is um, You can go into the direct mode, which is uh, basically no EQ, uh, no calibration uh, being done. It's just basically what goes in and what goes out. And, and that's, you know, uh, we, we talk about room calibration ad nauseum now, especially with the introduction of DRAC Live on the uh, NR7100. But there are still many people, and uh, occasionally I'm one of them, depending on the speakers that I'm using in the room that I'm in, where uh, you can really get a, an exceptional experience 
with a stereo pair of speakers or even a surround sound system with with minimal effort and monkeying around with dsp settings and things like that can be you know there's there's sometimes a steep learning curve with that and a lot of people don't want to be bothered with that so you know you can just go into the direct mode and, and bypass all of that or you can hook up the microphone with AccuEQ and let AccuEQ do all the heavy lifting for you and do all the measurements for time delays and distance and room materials as well. So that can add a lot of, of sound quality back into the picture that the room had initially taken away because everybody's room is unique. I mean, even in cookie cutter houses and apartments, every room is still unique because What's in that room? Are there are there drapes over the windows? Is mm -hmm. there leather furniture or fabric furniture? Is there carpet over hardwood floors or just bare hardwood floor? All of these variations can really change the sound. So something like AccuEQ can really uh, help to alleviate a lot of those problems and get you closer technically back to that recording studio environment that originally got the the green light from the the. Uh, original artist, the composer or the uh, musician. Um, from an amplification stage, you know, really nothing has changed on that end because we've we've had a very robust amplification uh, design for, for many years now. Uh, yeah, so uh, actually yeah. speaking of uh, robust, let me ask you this. Um, so we are still a partner with THX and, and when it comes down to robustness, you know, how does THX help us uh, build better exactly. products? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a great example. I'm, I'm glad you brought them up. So, you know, we can talk about THX until we're blue in the face and the cows come home. What is it? How does it work? What are the advantages? What are the pros and cons? What it really boils down to for everybody is they are an unbiased third-party certification house. Think of them that way. So whether you're using THX parameters in your surround sound system or not, they have put the product through a, a veritable gamut of thousands, literally thousands of tests on every single individual input, output, amplification stage, surround sound mode, stereo mode, mono mode, every single parameter that you can adjust in anything that gets THX certified. They try every single setting in combinations, individually and in combinations to see what are the results, does the amplifier stand up to uh, demands? Can it reach a certain uh, uh, dB level at a specific distance in a uh, specific cubic uh, foot size shaped uh, environment? And it really, you know, will it add anything to the sound? Will it take anything away from the sound? And it also is about video as well too. So even though we don't do video processing anymore, in our receivers, they still analyze the video pathways in our receivers to make sure that the, just like the audio, the picture is exactly the way the content creator wanted it to be, wants you to see it. So it's uh, as distortion free and as dynamic as possible. And the way that I like to talk about it in a, in a nutshell is, you know, it's, it's gonna give you the same experience in your home that you would expect to get in a THX movie theater. So it's going to be on a much smaller scale, of course, but the same dynamics and clarity is what you would expect to get with a THX certified system. I'm going to make a just a quick little left turn here um, because something that you said, Rolf, uh, really piqued my interest. Um, you know, uh, you talked about the delivery of the quality of the video and the frame rate and all of that, and you talked about um, the quality of the audio and THX being sort of the bullshit detector on what, what actually passes that or doesn't. You guys recently had a great review when it came to the video game world. Um, when you were talking about, uh, you know, the, this amplifier does one of the, one of the things, uh, this AVR does one of the things that uh, uh, very few do. Um, do you guys want to expand, expound on that a little bit? Yeah, I'm going to let Rob handle that one because he actually got one of the few Xbox Series Xs that are available in the wild. And he got to play with it and verify what our receivers are able to do. So, Rob, take it away. Yeah, so um, I'm sure a lot of folks on this uh, on this chat here um, have heard about the uh, early HDMI 2.1 bug. And we don't have to get into all that. But the point is um, we have our samples sent to me uh, as well as uh, our engineers, obviously, uh, in the U.S. as well as Japan. And I kind of approach it more from like how a consumer would use it. And um, 
uh, we are uh, capable of passing uh, 4K 120 uh, HDR with a uh, variable refresh rate, which is, you know, I don't want to get too much into weeds, but anybody out there is listening who's a gamer knows what I'm talking about. So uh, HDMI 2.1 offers just this a tremendous amount of uh, extra bandwidth, which is really fun to learn about. Maybe we could do another session on that. Um, but uh, a lot of these uh, topics, by the way, are incredibly complex. So we're just scratching the surface here. So let's just put it this Scratcher. way. If you, uh, if you have the right TV and you have an Xbox Series X and our receiver uh, um, specifically from the 6100 and up that has full 40 gigabit per second uh, bandwidth inputs, uh, three on all the models minimum. And by the way, that that is the um, the hardware limitation of what's available for HDMI repeaters right now. Uh, so I know we all know that it's 48 gigabits per second for HDMI 2.1. I don't, I don't want to get terribly in the weeds, but so I really love this one guy named Vincent Tio, who's in the UK. He does these incredible, comprehensive, independent reviews, and I wanted him to vet this product for us because he is by far the expert. Um, there's a lot of gamers on YouTube, but this guy will go into the service menu of TVs to make sure that you're getting the signal you should be getting. And, you know, that speed and refresh rate and low latency, that's super important for gaming. Um, and I know the gamers out there know what I'm talking about. So we um, had a great response to that video. And if you get a chance, maybe we could drop it in the chat. You can check it out. Um, he was very pleased with the performance of the RZ50. And uh, we're, we were very happy to hear that. And, um, you know, it's one thing for us to get up here and say that our products are great, but it's another thing to have a third party independent person who it, actually he's as passionate about this stuff that, as we are. And that's kind of why we chose to send it to him. Fantastic. Yeah, does that, does that make sense or am I uh, getting too, too far? Oh, that's great the information. <laughs> you know, gaming technology, it's typically cutting edge. You know, it, it, it is. And, and we know that just from our involvement with it in the past. Uh, gamers talk about enthusiasts, you know, for performance and, and how object-based surround really started with games. And then it made its way into the home theater codex. And uh, anybody who <laughs> has surround sound for their gaming and has realistic audio and video knows that they kind of uh, lose themselves into the games. And that's the whole point. You know, and of course, if it does it well for games, then what it does the same thing for home theater. That that's the whole point. You kind of forget yourself. It takes you to another place. It, yeah, it, we, we want to suspend yeah. disbelief, right? Yeah, that's. Uh, I, I took some uh, uh, Pro Tools and uh, sound design courses at NYU one year, and my you know my uh, instructor in sound design was just like, you need to suspend disbelief and and. <laughs> You know, you could see that uh, by, I mean, looking at Rolf's lair and my lair, and, and I'm, I'm sure you guys do. And, you know, and then downstairs I have the music stuff, and it's like, it's all about really just escaping into a place that you may physically never be. Like, who's going to hear Elvis sing live again, right? So <laughs> if we can uh, replicate that mm. at home, I mean, what, what more could you ask for for an entertainment experience? So that's, that's, that's in our hearts, it's in our DNA, and we do our best to, to, to put it into these black boxes, if you will. You're so right, Rob. I, I, I would say that, you know, beyond the technology that goes into it and beyond, you know, the ones and zeros and beyond the stacks of uh, information and history that goes into all of this stuff, it really is about delivering the, ex the experience. And, you know, as a, um, you know, tried and true, died in the wool, uh, you know, clips proponent, um, the Onkyo stuff, it sounds like you guys, your heart is in the right place, your mind is in the right place, but more than anything, it's the passion there that, that, that's, uh, that's, coming out from you guys that we're hearing about these new models. Do we want to talk about any of the other models that, that you have coming? Do we, should we, should we go to the lineup? Sure. Why not? You know what? Um, let me just try something real quick that I think will be fun. Do right. It. I'm just going to take a minute and I know I'm Mr. Techie and I don't want. <laughs> oh, you know, like I'm just going to change something. We're, we're anticipating this from you. I mean, we're nerds. We're waiting for this. We want this kind of stuff. All right. Obviously my green screen technique is not up to par. So what I'm doing right now is, uh, if you, you can see my browser, right? Right. Yeah. 
Yes. So, so if you if you go to the IP address of, of this 5100, and don't forget the 5100 is the you know entry level affordable piece. Let me put my big head out of the way a little bit here. <laughs> um, you can see that um, I we now have a, a, a web setup app. So like if you're an advanced user or a CI. Um, I'll even show you the front of this AVR because it's kind of fun. Sorry about the poor image quality there. But you can access everything that's in this piece. So, you know, even something simple like name edit, um, you know, you could just simplify your life and just and, and by the way, you can access this from any browser based device. So if it's a if it's a, you know, a, a tablet or whatever, that's fine, too. And all I have to do is store it and boom. And boom, and and now you see on the front of the receiver, I, I just renamed that input. So I'm not going to go crazy like through all this, but just imagine now that you have incredible amounts of, uh, of flexibility. And in the Dirac enabled pieces, you could set uh, your your Dirac slot per input. And uh, I know we're, we're we're short on time, so I just wanted to drop that in there because I know there's some folks out there that are just going to be like blown away with that flexibility. And I'm super proud to show that it, it was a while to develop that. Um, so thanks for giving me that, that moment. That's super awesome. Love that you can do that. And you know, the custom, uh, custom ability, customizability, I guess that's the word, um, is infinite. I mean, you can continue to, you know, add, add things and change things and, and modify as needed. Yeah, and you can see the changes that you make into, into a uh, file on your mobile device or your computer. So if you do make changes, if you really want to go crazy and play around with all the different functionality and capabilities of the AVR, you can go back to the original settings whenever you want to, the settings that you liked the first time, the ones that you know worked right for you the first time, and go back to those and swap them in and out whenever you want to. So it's, it's pretty cool. Okay, I have a question for you guys because I think we're going to get close to – you know, wrapping it up. Um, but I think we still have a, a good amount of time. But let's say I already have uh, an AVR and I've had it for a few years. I've been thinking about upgrading all the new tech that's coming. And, you know, uh, I've read some of these questions uh, that our viewers have posted. And basically, I have two questions. So, uh, you know, HDMI protocol has changed a little bit over the years. Uh, some of the questions were, you know, with this new line in 2.1, you know, how stable how long will this last this is next gen stuff so if people are going to invest in a new avr is this a good time and then especially if they have uh, a prior model maybe a prior you know some other manufacturer what is a just give us your top two compelling reasons why the new onkyos are the way to go <laughs> well you know as far as like you know is this a good time how long is hdmi 2.1 going to be around. Look at how long HDMI 2 was around. That was a long time. So by the time HDMI 2.1 gets replaced by 2.2 or whatever they decide to call it after that, you know, there's going to be some pretty radical changes in the technology and in the the whole the customizability and the the streaming sources and the services that you can access out there. So yeah, this is this these are receivers that you're going to keep for a long time, and you know you may not need to upgrade that receiver for a long time anyway because you know our, all of our receivers have enhanced audio return channel inputs on the back of them. So you know whatever smart TV you get with the latest and greatest resolution and surround sound format from streaming sources that can be fed back in over the eARC input on the back of receivers. So the receiver is still you know a fantastic way of being able to create that surround sound, that immersive surround sound environment. So, you know, that's that's something that you're not going to need to upgrade for many years. Yeah, and um, it's not just, sure, 8K and uh, HDMI 2.1 with the 4K 120 gaming, that's great. Um, but, you know, when you consider in some of these products, well, in all the products, we have the new Aptex Bluetooth transmitter. That's uh, a new feature. Uh, we also have Dirac Live in a lot of these products. We have the web setup that I just showed. So, I mean, really, I'm not, you know, really trying to sell anybody on it. But if you look at, you know, a couple of years ago, these are highly advanced at this point. And, um, but also, to be honest, they're really easy to use, too, for the consumer 
who just wants to plug it in and go, you know? So I know that I kind of get into the weeds and, and I show off what's underneath the hood, right? But it's really though, you could you could take this 5100 out of the box and, you know, just, uh, you don't even have to use the AccuEQ if you don't want to, but if you plug the mic in, it'll pop up on your screen and walk you through it. Yeah. It's, it's really simple, so. I think um, and talking about ease of yeah. use too, you know, we're the only receiver brand in the world that's uh, works with Sonos certified. Uh, and yes. I know there's a lot of people on on this call today that are Sonos owners or have seen and heard just how incredibly easy it is to use Sonos with Sonos speakers. So you know you've got that easy to use Sonos app on your mobile device. And you want to access streaming services from the Sonos ecosystem and send it to different Sonos speakers around the house. But if you want to enjoy that same service and ease of use in uh, your home theater on your nice big clip speakers, then get a Sonos port, which is basically a little access point on your mm -hmm. network and hook that into any input that's not being used on the back of a TXNR 5100 or 6100 or 7100, any of the Ankyo receivers uh, in the 2021. And that will, put that Anki receiver into the Sonos ecosystem. And that's really all you have to do. You have to do you know, a few little setup configurations once in the receiver, and then you're done. But anytime you want to listen to Sonos music in your home theater on your nice big speakers, uh, you just open up the Sonos app on your mobile device, tap the icon for the Sonos port that's plugged into the back of the receiver. And if the receiver is off, it'll turn the receiver on, it'll switch to the correct input, and it gives you complete control over the volume of the receiver's amplifier, not just the volume in the app itself. So it's incredibly easy to use. Uh, and that's, you know, if it's not easy to use, it's not fun. And if it's not fun, who <laughs> wants to use it, right? That was, I I think our audience is full of enthusiasts, you know, God yeah. bless everybody watching, you know, Klipsch fans, Onkyo fans, but perhaps people, you know, considering a component home theater system. And, you know, we know how popular sound bars are and it's because they're easy to use. But right. to have component systems, easy to use, out of the box, ready to go, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that is a key differentiator from AVRs in the past. And that is a great message for everybody listening. Uh, yeah, if you absolutely. do upgrade to great new technology, I mean, everybody eventually incorporates this great new technology. But... The differentiating factors for Ankyo is, I think, just audio purity, audio quality, you know, uh, guts in the amplifier section, you know, quality, low noise. You know, when you hook up clip speakers, it tells you a lot about your amplifier. We've been talking about that for decades, haven't we, Matt? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. So quality of the audio section, that's that's what I'm thinking for Ankyo. And then, of course, all this, all the wizardry you guys are talking about. It's yeah, really so, so to that point, um, we have a uh, volume pass through with Sonos and I was trying to show a little screen clip for something funny to look at. Uh, so I'm going to do that because it's supposed to be fun, right? Do so, it. Uh, so this is my living room when I decide that I need to test Sonos. So we're not playing around here. I mean, I will destroy, <laughs> I will destroy my living environment to make sure that this stuff works the way it should um, before, it, before it goes out there. Um, so, so, but, but anyway, Speaking about the sound quality, as I continue to move my head around, um, we have volume pass through. So like literally you're not using the variable out of the Sonos device, which sounds great as it is, but if you want to use the DAX of our AVRs and it's a little bit cleaner way to control the AVR, we're literally controlling the volume of the AVR through the Sonos app. So it it really is a very special integration and, and, it's, and it sounds awesome. And I think that Going back to you know all the all the gadgetry and stuff, it really just comes down to you know does this thing look and sound as good as it can, and that's really uh, paramount to us. Yeah, we're giving yeah. a hint of the details, the extreme measures you guys go through to ensure fantastic <laughs> performance. That's an insane. I can't believe you haven't altered your gen genetic structure just from the amount of waves that are going on around you. But I do think the idea of signal chain is really important and being able to uh, have a single volume control that deals with the entire system as opposed to plus or minusing something else that's coming in that may be plus or minus from somewhere else, you know? So I, I definitely understand that part of it. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the amount of Sonos you have going on in your house, I'm sure it's probably alternate. You know, you're probably seeing the future when you sleep. <laughs> I'm, oh, yeah. I'm uh, very confused on a daily basis. 
<laughs> or, or, or people around me are. I, I should put it that way. <laughs> It's, it's like not easy uh, finding guys like you that I could have this conversation with. So that's why I want to go into the weeds, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, exactly. that's fantastic. Well, you, you and maybe 3,000 other viewers here joining us, you know? Um, yeah. We are getting yeah, so, so, many great, so many great questions. And I will tell you guys that we will try to answer every question that's in this thread. It may be post the show, um, but we'll try to get, get all those answers. Um, hopefully, we provided a little bit of a portal into um, kind of what Onkyo is doing today and, and kind of the passion behind the brand. Um, you guys, in our closing minutes, before we announce the winner of the system, uh, uh, do you want to talk about any of the other uh, models? Um, you know, you've got we've got some stuff coming down the the path. Um, do we want to do we want to show any of that stuff here? Well, so, when you step up from the fifty one hundred to like the sixty one hundred, that's where you start getting THX certification. So that's where you know that no holds barred testing was done on this by a third party company to make sure that the audio and the video pathways are the purest they possibly can be. And you also get second zone capability as well too. So you can have a five channel surround sound system in one room. And a pair of other speakers in another room playing something completely different from either a streaming source or you know uh, any of your analog or even HDMI sources. So your first three HDMI inputs, you can actually strip the audio from that and send that out to zone two or your turntable. If you want to listen to your turntable in zone two, you could do that as well. And those are pretty, uh, pretty useful, handy features to have. Fantastic. Anything else coming down the path that you guys want to talk about? You mentioned real quick the uh, RZ50, TXRZ50. Yeah, is so it, um, is, is Brittany controlling the, uh, the the links that we can share? So, sorry, I'm not sure how it works. Because um, in the private chat, I sent a link to um, something that will lead everybody to all the, the new lineup spec sheets. I think that would be helpful for the viewers out there as well as the link to the RZ50 video. Awesome. We will share all of that. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we could spend, um, you know, three hours on one feature, you know, the, the, yeah. the way that we were inside of it. Um, and then maybe we'll, we'll do another one of these and we'll just zero in on, on what, what people want to see in here. You know, yeah, and to your, your point earlier, Rob and I do occasionally call each other up and we'll be like, man, I couldn't sleep last night. All I could think about was this particular feature or function. And we literally lose sleep over this stuff regularly. I, I'm sorry to say, but well, you know, well, it, it's, we're the other passionate factor, about it. Yeah, yeah, the other factor is Japan is 13 hours ahead of us. So, you know, we need to start our calls with them at 8, 9 p.m. if we want to really get something accomplished, and you know, or, or, the, or the other way around. So, I mean, we really... Like you, like when you guys launched this uh, chat, you said, you know, it, to be in this business, you really have to be passionate about it. You really have to love it and want to be in it, or it, it's just not going to work. And, you know, I can tell you this, Rolf and I, you know, still buy discs, you know, video discs, uh, you know, and uh, <laughs> because we want the, the pinnacle of the experience. And, and we, I, I subscribe to every streaming app out there, whether it be... Um, you know, for audio, for video. I mean, we, we, we go on and on and on. But the point is, you could see that we live it and love it. And we just hope that that energy is is conveyed, you know, to the folks that are out there using these products, because that, that's what makes us feel good. You know, when I would go into retail environments to train the sales guys, I would always tell them that you're my most important customer, because if I can't get you passionate about what I'm trying to teach you, mm -hmm then how like how can you possibly get your customers passionate about it and i can't get passionate about anything i can't fake passion uh you know <laughs> sometimes people accuse me of like oh you're going over the top you're corny like yeah but you know what because i'm crazy about it i wouldn't be doing this for all these years if if i didn't you know i need to do this yes it's right there's no choice that sounds <laughs> i need to share have no choice excitement. <laughs> you're absolutely I don't, right i don't I know Matt knows that when he turns off his, let's call it home audio brain, and then goes to his pro audio brain, now he's doubled down on the You're amount of complexity and, and love, right? <laughs> so maybe next time we'll shoot it from my, my uh, little humble studio basement because, you know, yeah. 
you want to see a bunch of wires. You know? <laughs> yeah. You're going to see a lot of wires down there, too. So, yeah, we're just obsessed. And that's really the whole point of this. I don't know. OK. OK. Brothers in arms. Rob and Rolf, look at the text stream. Uh, we, Brittany would like to choose a, a winner, a, qu a question. And we need you guys to oh, weigh please. in on this. So behind the scenes, okay. uh, do that real quick. And and. Matt, you and I were going to tap dance. You know, you know uh, no, 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 Mark. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about next week's uh, uh, listening lounge we, on uh, on Thursday. Yeah. Oh we are, yeah, sure. We're going to be talking about uh, cinema series sound bars and the launch yep. of the eight hundred and the twelve hundred. It's going to yep. be it fantastic. Time. It is time. Uh, we have the Atmos Klipsch cinema bars, and we're going to have a special session. Uh, we really want to. Um, cover the details uh, we'll have mr mike barato joining us uh the soundbar wizard and um we're gonna get into it you know we're gonna talk about uh these remarkable uh sound bars they don't they don't know they're sound bars they they they're they're shaped kind of like sound bars but you keep they, saying that shapeshifters right nope they they are they're horn loaded <laughs> component speakers really i mean they're 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 just happen to be very convenient uh, plug and play, blah, blah, blah. You know, I can't believe I said blah, blah, blah. But everybody, <laughs> we're going to give those uh, nuggets of information next week. And um, we're, we're excited about it. But, you know, uh, as you can see, and <laughs> Rob and Rolf were commenting about their, their the EMF um, or, or I don't know, the electromagnetic waves that they're exposed to in their house. Well, <laughs> right around here. Yeah, this house is also a test lab. Don't laugh, Matt. You have the same thing going on. You know, it's true. he produces it's, the it's music true. for our our <laughs> videos. He's a musician. He's got a, a, a string. Is that a cello back there? Uh, it's a, that's a double bass. That's a double bass. So yeah. it's far enough back. It, it's, it, it's it's bigger than we realize. And then there's a drum set somewhere in there. And, and yeah, you know, here. he's got all these percussion, percussion keyboards. Oh, he's hiding it right behind him. <laughs> right behind him. So, you Matt, know. Can you uh, slap your bass? <laughs> That's a personal question, Rolf. Oh, really. come on. JP504, slap that baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, we, we're all, uh, we like to play live music, and it's a good outlet, of course. But then what's better than reproducing it, uh, you know, with the, this great gear? And, um, you know, hey, hey, Rob, uh, Professor Rob, what, what is, <laughs> what's the, what does Ankyo mean? Isn't there, isn't it, there's a Japanese meaning behind this name, Ankyo, right? I believe it uh, roughly translates into harmony of sound. Uh, Rolf, yeah. would you back me up yeah, on that? that that's pretty close. I mean, it depends on who you talk to, but yeah, that's close enough. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Um, the, the, Ankyo used to have a tagline many, many years ago. I think it was the artistry of sound. So harmony of sound, artistry. Yeah, take your pick. The important sort of thing like is the word sounds in there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's sort of like the uh, Dirac uh, that came from. Isn't that the uh, the ultimate harmony equation? There's something yeah, wrong. Yeah, this the that physicist who broke Einstein's brain. Yes, there's <laughs> actually a quote uh, on Wikipedia by Einstein that says, "I don't understand Dirac at all." His name was Paul Dirac. We we pronounce it twenty different ways, but uh, yeah, it's it's about the uh, the formula that he came up with. It's uh, that that is a really interesting discussion and. Maybe we get uh, some guests from Dirac on, you know, one of these days, and I'd love you know, that, Mark. That'd be great. Something like that. I mean, I don't know if it'll be as it might get a little too techy, but uh, that's the business we're in sometimes, right? <laughs> so well, we're looking at the uh, chat here. Let's see. Yeah. Do you guys have a uh, Do you guys have any uh, winners picked on the uh, um, for the giveaway? I think Brittany is trying to uh, get some feedback from these guys right now. So, oh, sweet. Well, I like I like this one comment because it's very flattering. <laughs> we'll send the send the feedback to Brittany, and then if we can make an announcement with her, uh, you know, approval. Is it? It's got to be a question, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not a comment. Okay. <laughs> well. Because yeah, a flattering yeah, statement. Well, yeah, yeah well, <laughs> make sure it has a question mark. Yeah. If it's flattering that's and there's a question mark, well, yes, yeah, right. Yeah. That gets into payola. That's that's the payola Somebody. thing. So. Yeah, we dealt with that in FM radio in the seventies. Daniel Fisher said Rob has the Death Star setup of Sonos testing. That, that was a, that was a great comment. Okay, well, when I looked at this background, everybody, when we 
first uh, began behind the stage there, uh, I, I said, what are you doing, Rob, in your spare time? Are you doing Bitcoin mining back there? That's, yeah. that's not good for you. You can't be so close. It was 120 degrees in there. It can oh, you know be. what? Here's a really good question that keeps getting asked. I would like to know, uh, when will the 5100 be released? Yeah. Um, Do we have a, have a launch date? Yeah, uh, next month. Right, Rolf, mm -hmm. uh, early July? Yeah. Should, yeah, it should yeah. be the middle or the end of July. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. So within All the right, next so 45 days, you guys should be able to get that. Fantastic. Boy, so many good questions. Good grief. Yeah. And, you know, if you guys, I don't know, you can make a suggestion to Britt if you want to do it live or if you want to do it afterwards. It's up to you. I mean. There's a lot of questions. There's I, I, there are so many. Yeah, there are so many. <laughs> I, I, I know everybody's uh, anxious and uh, so are we, but uh, we got a lot to, to go through here. All right. Well, you know what? Let's 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 tap out then. I think on this one, um, on, and we will announce the winner shortly. Yeah, very shortly. <laughs> yep. But I, I I've never seen so many questions. It's just been amazing. Right. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff going on, and you know what? I think w what I'm seeing is there's a there's an ex general excitement for what's next for Machio. And after talking to you guys today, which thank you so much for being on for our listening lounge, um, but uh, you know, you you see the passion and you see the the, the history and the experience that's, that, that these guys are bringing to this. Plus beyond Rob and Rolf, it's the entire team. You know the entire team of you know engineers and marketers and 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 uh, product developers and all that that that, that, that go into this. Um, Onkyo is is, is rocking and it, it's really cool to see what you guys are coming out with and have uh, hear the passion uh, going forward. Especially you know like we were talking the some of these uh, smaller markets like the well it's not really small but like the video game market. Um, you guys are killing it in that space right now with the uh, with the video pass through and everything that's happening in there uh you know you're getting a lot of great feedback so uh just like to say thank you for coming on and appreciate your dedication to quality well we really appreciate the opportunity I, and i can't say it enough because i know rob feels the same way but the amount of work blood sweat and tears we put into these new products i mean we're literally, we're literally going back you know almost three years in product development time uh working with the engineers in japan and this is this has been a true labor of love for us. So being at this point now, where the product is literally on the water, on the way to the docks, yeah. and then being in the stores is just—I can't tell you how that feels. It's just amazing. So, having this opportunity to, to meet everybody virtually and uh, share one of our new receivers with a lucky winner—that's just, man, that's amazing. I, I do. Cheers. Have, yeah. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Here's to your health. And a very successful launch. And um, anyone who's looking to build up their home theater system, get it all together, you know, by summertime, so that by the fall you're all set and your holidays are just going to be mayhem in your house because you're rocking it. <laughs> and invite your neighbors and friends over because you're you're going to, you know, they're going to be at your front door one way or another. So, you know, uh, speak, speaking of that, I mean, th th these receivers also integrate with uh, multi room uh, systems like Rune and, you know, Google and Alexa. And um, yeah, so so we that's forgot awesome. to mention that that's that's like a huge, huge win at, at these price points. And it's, you know, it's easy and convenient and airplay, too. I mean, plus Bluetooth, plus Bluetooth transmitter, just throwing last minute uh, ideas out there. I think yeah. we're going to have to have another session, guys. I, I, I think so. An AVR has got a lot going on, so we could we could chip well, away what, at it. What was right. it the engineers told us, Rob? There's like 6,000 components inside. Yep, 6,000 parts. Hard. We, we yeah. told you guys the hour would go fast, if you believe us. <laughs> I, got oh, yeah. one, yeah. I got one final question for Rob and Rolf. Um, you know, uh, you guys talk about the sort of the back end of that being the joy of how, you know, what's going on back there. Maybe even people don't know. Are there any tips, tricks, or Easter eggs in in this AVR, the 5100, that you would like uh, you would like people to know about? Well, I, I have to tell you, the web, the web setup feature that I showed is an Easter egg. Yeah, that's not on the website. It's not in the owner's manual. Yeah, that's it's, fantastic. It's, 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 it's something that you have to want to get there to get there. 
you yep. know. Um, so that's definitely an Easter egg. And then we have more surprises coming with that. Um, uh, well, it's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's pretty we'll easy save it for the next conversation. Yeah, I, I think, think so. I think if you're so. Trying yeah. to find the IP address of your receiver, it's pretty easy these days with routers and everything. And then once you type it in, you're there. So I mean, I don't think that's going to be too difficult for you know. And we, yeah, we well, can I certainly cover it in more detail next session. You know. Yeah, absolutely. The oh, how to great. how to stuff. You know. Yeah, yeah. And, and we'll be uh, putting putting videos out and stuff like that. I mean, we're just you know super busy with the product launch and and just have our, our samples and but as um the products become available we'll have some quick yeah, easy one minute don't videos don't don't expect super high production values for these videos because we're doing them out of our home offices and living rooms <laughs> i think people people understand that these days and they're cool with it so thanks again thank brothers you thanks, everybody. thank you guys so much great. thanks everybody out there we can't wait to get these in your hands trust me <laughs> Thank you Thank so you. much for tuning in.